Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Dear loving and gracious Heavenly Father, may you have all the glory for this video. May your words be spoken, not mine. And may everyone who comes to watch it be blessed. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to present the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians verses 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus loves you. He wants you to spend eternity with him, but that cannot happen unless you are born again. So first, repent. Admit that you're a sinful creature like we all are. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth, lived a perfect and sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins, all of your sins, past, present, and future, no matter what you have done. For the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. He died, was buried, and rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. All you have to do is believe that. Believe it without adding in any of your own good works or trying to be good. It has nothing to do with belonging to any church, practicing any religion, being baptized. The moment you believe, it's like a personal encounter in your heart between you and God himself, where you call on his name. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You might say, come into my life, Lord Jesus, or Jesus, I believe you, save me. Whatever it is, talk to God. And the moment you believe, you are saved. You receive the Holy Spirit who will indwell you forever because your salvation is eternal. You can never lose your salvation. So I hope you've believed because the alternative, not believing, means that you will spend eternity in hell, and nobody wants that. So please believe. My email address is in the description box, or you can leave a comment below. I want to talk to you about yolks today. Not egg yolks, but the kind of yolk you put over the shoulders of oxen when they're plowing. Let's start in Jeremiah 29, 5, and 6. This is at the time when the Israelites had been exiled to Babylon, and God commanded through Jeremiah, uh, and Jeremiah sent a letter to the exiles in Babylon. And this is what it said, Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husband, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. They were to build houses and prosper, plant gardens, etc. But then there were false prophets in Babylon. And this is what Jeremiah 29, 9 says, For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. And then a false prophet in Jerusalem, he sent a letter. This is Jeremiah 29, verse 31. And this is what God says to Shemaiah. Because that Shemaiah hath prophesied unto you, and I sent him not, and he caused you to trust in a lie. Verse 32. Neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, saith the Lord, because he hath taught rebellion against the Lord. That is the... The, the phrase that the Lord gave me, because he has taught rebellion against the Lord. Then there was another example of this, Jeremiah 28, verse 16. Hananiah prophesied that in two years God would break the yoke of the king of Babylon that was on the Israelites. And this was Jeremiah's response. In verse 8, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. 
So when you hear people prophesying the prophecies in the Old Testament, they're going to be sounding pretty negative because they're prophesying of evil to come. And here's what verse 9 says, Jeremiah 28, 9. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of that prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and brake it. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. But then the Lord spoke to Jeremiah. And here's what verse 15 says. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. There's that same phrase that the Lord gave me. Because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. So this is so extremely important when you don't give the truth in prophesying, you are teaching rebellion against the Lord. And this is what is happening to all the people out there who are saying you can lose your salvation. You are teaching rebellion against the Lord, and it's not going to end well for you. Stop that. Stop that. Here's another verse, Jeremiah 31, 18 through 19, that talks about the yoke. God is speaking. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. And that is the truth. I have felt this sense of grief over my past wrongs. But Jeremiah 31, 13 has a beautiful promise. Actually, it says verse 3. I might have the wrong verse. I'm sorry. I'll have to, you will have to check it after I'm done here. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together. For I will turn their mourning into joy and will comfort them and make them rejoice from their sorrow. This is the promise God has for you when you take the yoke upon you. Take the yoke. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. I want to take the Lord's yoke upon me, because it's good for me. It's from, for my own good. And I just need to learn better how to do that. It's so important. And then we have to end with Psalm 32. It was brought to me twice this week, and so I know it had to go up in a video. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones whacked old through my roaring all the day long. 
for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. And so praise God that he is faithful to forgive us our sins and to lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. And it's so important for us to just take his yoke upon us and just do what he says. So I praise God for that. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I love you all. If there's another video to be made, I will make it and post it as the Lord shows me. Until then, bye for now.